Hey there, One Stop Co-op Shop viewers. This is Mike, and today I'm looking at Aftermath from Plaid Hat Games. So I will note this was a review copy sent to us by uh, Plaid Hat and Asmodee. And if you'd like to hear what I think about the game, go check out my review. This is the third game in their adventure book series designed by Jerry Hawthorne. And it's following up Stuffed Fables, which I've covered in a review in the past, and also Comanaut, which I've only played a couple times. This game returns to the cute animals in a human world theme of Mice and Mystics, but this time in a post-apocalypse where all the humans have disappeared. So uh, here we've got the two characters I've chosen to play. This is Grumple, the female guinea pig warrior. And then you've also got Ringer, the hamster knows it, sort of like a fixer and intelligent guy. And do note, I think this is how the main game is going to come, but all the miniatures in this are kind of pre-washed and sort of uh, pre-dipped, so you get like, kind of some nice uh, detail work in here, but I really love those. And this game feels a bit like a mix of Comanauts and Stuff Fables in that you do have a campaign you're playing through, but it's a very user-driven campaign. You can choose kind of which parts of the story to explore at which times. But it does feel a bit more cohesive to me like Stuff Fables did, whereas Comanauts I kind of felt uh, went in different directions sometimes and didn't hold together as much as I would have liked. What I'm going to show you here is a mission in kind of the middle of the campaign. I don't want to show you the first mission. I'm sure a lot of people will cover that as the game gets more coverage. But I also didn't want to show you like the end of the game spoilers. So there will be some minor spoilers in the game. I'll try to cover up anything that's kind of uh, previously been revealed. So you're just seeing some stuff for this one particular mission. And we'll try to keep it at that. So you do have your requisite book, of course, and it's a beautifully bound and illustrated book again, just like the other games in this series. And you've got this home sweet home setup uh, that's for every mission except for the first one. And the basic idea is you're going to have all of these missions available to you. And I'll say that a lot of these are ones that have been unlocked as I played other missions. So as you explore the world, you'll find out about more things you can kind of do, which is a lot of fun. What I've chosen this time is I'm going on the main mission, Dog House. I found this uh, house that is guarded by a dog that I want to investigate. I think there might be some friendly mice I can uh, ally with hiding there. And then you also pick a side mission. I'm picking Forage the Area. Now, why do I need to forage the area? Let's look at our campaign dashboard and show you. So in the game, you've got this persistent colony that you're trying to defend. And if it either runs out of population or runs out of morale, then that's how you lose the entire campaign. And you'll see there's a nice little thing that keeps track of everything for you. No uh, writing information down like Kingdom Death here. And you've got a time that slowly ticks up as you're on your mission, and that could put your colony in danger. You have to draw more encounter cards that threaten it as uh, the time ticks up. You've got clues and kind of this overarching uh, campaign, trying to solve like some mysteries of what's going on in the world and unlock more stuff. I'm about halfway up on that. Scrap you use for upgrades and bringing better items with you. Morale and population are tied to the colony itself. And then food, you'll notice, I have zero. And I need to at least as much as my population. So that means 14 food to feed everyone when I come back. Otherwise, I'll lose morale, potentially lose the game. So that, dear friends, is why I am foraging the area for my side mission. So you do have to look for any special rules and also how far you're going. So in this case, the main mission tells me I'm trying to go to D1. And what does that mean? Well, you've got this little 4x4 uh, four four grid of locations for this base game campaign. And if we go to D1, we're trying to go to Central Place. And I've been here before. I've been to all three of these locations kind of from my base here to there before. And what you'll see is uh, when you first get to a location, a bunch of unique stuff happens. But then the other times you go through there, usually it's pretty quick and you can kind of just dash to the place you want to go. Now, when you unlock things, you can get vehicles that can allow you to fast travel and stuff, but you'll note this one says I have to uh, either go on foot or I could travel fast, but I have five time to only go three spaces away, so there's not much uh, use in using up the fuel, and I want to see you kind of experience multiple locations. So I'm going to go ahead and head through E Street and Enjo to try to get the central place, and again, hopefully pick up a bunch of food on the way. Now, I did already mention it, but this is how much time I can safely spend on this mission. So if my time track ticks up to five, I'll be fine. But then every point beyond five is going to have me draw a potentially negative card to affect my colony. And then for the foraging, uh, you'll see that I need to have enough food to feed my colony when I win or when I finish the mission. That's how I win this one. And a nice thing that helps me is I'm not going to get any scrap this mission from these clue tokens you find. Instead, they're going to all become food. So I'm going to get a bunch of food, but not much scrap for upgrading. Now, as I said, I'm playing with two characters. We've got Grumple the guinea pig and Ringer the hamster. 
There are four characters in the base game. They have promise expansions with more, and they have their own unique upgrades. Although, well, I don't know if it's unique to them because it has a class, so I have to imagine there might be another big character at some point. They've got their own stat bonuses. There's a red, blue, green, and yellow basically in the game, so Grumple is good at sort of the strength, uh, melee attacking, and defense abilities. They say what starting ability they have, what starting item they always have. And then they have a goal. This is how you win the campaign. If you accomplish the goals of all four characters in your party, then uh, you win the game. So, so far, I haven't done any of them in this particular campaign I'm running, but I am close to getting a bunch of them. But I'm not showing you one of those missions today. I want to keep you kind of uh, more in the dark on spoiler stuff. So they get just one starting item. So Grumple gets a free steak knife. You can see a bonus to melee attack. And in this case, it has a special ability. Not all of them will. It means I'm better at hitting uh, bosses and leaders. Now, additionally, because of a Kami upgrade I have, I get to get one of these items for free. I have a whole bunch of items that I've found through my travels, but they all have these repair costs to bring them with me on a given mission, which would cost me scrap for my supply, and I don't have that much. But this upgrade I got from Ikani lets each of my characters bring one item without paying the cost. So I'm bringing this pretty expensive aluminum armor that gives him a better defense for free. And I'm also wearing a tattered scarf, which gives him extra cards in his hand. And as we said, there's a dog. So I found a dog biscuit in another mission. I'm certainly bringing that. I imagine it'll help me uh, accomplish my goals here. And then Ringer is a lot simpler. He uh, brought a Needler for uh, free again with that upgrade. But this is a plus two attack, super great weapon, range attack, that's what green is. But it does have a low ammo ability, which might make me discard this item, which would uh, or break the item, which would be terrible. But what I've done is I've brought some spare ammo, which ignores that ability. Now that did cost me one of my scrap, because, again, I only get to bring one item for free. I've actually put Ringer's one-shot starting item in his backpack, because I'm going to be good to go with my plus three to my range attacks between uh, his regular ability and that. And then for character abilities, Grumple can throw people or objects and he can heal himself of damage. Ringer can aim to make an attack really powerful. He can uh, take away threat cards to make the enemies activate less often. And then he can also uh, find items more easily. All right, so with that stuff out of the way, let's get right into the gameplay. I get to pick where I want to go first, and I'm going to go to E Street. That is the first way along the way to my goal, central place. I could go wherever I want, but again, I'd be wasting time and potentially putting my colony in danger. And each location tells you what page of the adventure book to go to. So I'm going to turn to page five. And this will look familiar to anyone who's played Stuff Fables or Comanauts. You've got the map that your characters will be moving on on the left. And then you've got like all the narrative text and all the special rules for this location on the right. Now, almost every location starts with a small icon right here. It says plus one time. So I'm going to track my time up one. And again, that's going to happen basically every time you go to a new page. And that will put my colony in danger if I go above five. And then you'll see it says uh, read this the first time you come to this page. But if you've already been to this page, you skip all of this. And similarly, there's all these eyeball spaces on the board that have like little special effects. But I've already resolved all of those the last times I've come here. So I'm going to skip over all of those. I'm not going to see those special effects again. This basically this becomes a map to scavenge some stuff and uh, potentially fight some people. So setup for maps can sometimes have special rules. But here it's very simple. Both Grumple and Ring are going to go in this little placement space here. I'm going to put some scavenge tokens here on all the matching symbols. And you notice these all have twos on them. That's the difficulty to acquire them. And it also means that they have weaker items on their back. Uh, there's also threes and fours. But you have to go through all the twos before you get to the threes and fours. So basically, the longer you stay out, the better stuff you're going to get for your colony. Now, you might think this is a very boring thing because I've been here several times. It's going to be the same as every other time, but not so because I have all these encounter cards with different things that can happen. And the fun thing is, as other things happen in the campaign and I meet different groups and I have different adventures, I get to add cards to this deck. So I'm going to draw an encounter and see what happens. In this case, ooh, it's a special encounter. So this is kind of cool. Uh, you'll see that in the book in a moment. They have these E, 1s, and 2s, and 3s. So every page has unique things that can happen based on an account. I don't think I've ever gotten this one before, so let's see what E1 says for me. Hold it right there, snarls their leader, though his paw trembles. They are no match for your crew, and darn well know it. But it's a chance that talk could lead to negotiation and a lack of bloodshed. So this is something that's uh, kind of fun. In this one, you'll meet people, but sometimes the situation will be safe, and sometimes they'll be hostile. With hostile, you just have to fight them, or you could run away from them and just uh, scavenge and stuff. But with safe encounters like this one, I have a chance to convince these people to become my friends and actually come back to the colony and fill my population out more. So it says I'm going to encounter uh, two random nomads equal to my number of characters. If I defeat them, I'll get a broken item, the top card from the item deck, but it'll be broken, but I can fix it later. 
And it does say if I make friends with all of these guys, which you'll see in a second, because I'm going to try to do this, I get to go to 5-2, so I get a special little result. Now, additionally, they kind of summarize the rules for Communicate, because this is generally going to be the first page you go to if you're playing through the sort of tutorial mission. But uh, basically, I'm going to make a skill test, which you'll see in a moment when I get into how to kind of move your characters, and we'll go from there. Now, you have all these uh, enemies of different types, but here I'm looking for kind of the nicest, most simple guys, which are Meekling Nomads. Now, I do note that it didn't say Meeklings, it said Nomads, so I have to assume that as they get more expansions, they'll have, like, new Nomads you might encounter. So I'm going to get two of them. So this is I got two Meeklings. But notice that one of them is a melee guy, one of them is a ranged guy. So uh, this is how much damage you need to do to them, so these guys just take one hit to defeat. How much you need to equal or exceed in your attack to hit them. And then here is your yellow difficulty, which we'll see soon. How hard it is to communicate with them and get them to be on your side. Now, additionally, very similar to the other games in this series, if you've seen them, you've got different activations for them, how far they'll move, how far they'll shoot at range, and how much damage you have to kind of defend against. Now, these cards go over here, and uh, as threat cards come out from the action deck you're about to see, then they'll go over here. And in this case right now, they're nice, but if I get enough threat cards to trigger a surge, and uh, that's basically four threat cards, they're going to become hostile. So I have to make them my friend before that happens. By the way, here they are, little adorable guys. Look at them. They want to join my colony. Yes, they do. So another symbol on the board is this little uh, kind of enemy mouse symbol. That's where enemies spawn. This is also the exit, so we have to move here to get off of this map. And then there are some other symbols to call out. As I already said, there are these eyeballs. Usually if this was a new map and I moved into them, I'd read whatever the description was and something might happen, but I've already been here before, so that won't take effect. And then also this is a hidden space. So if anybody's on here, enemies will not target them as their target. They'll go to somebody else. All right, so Rigor is going to be first. And if you have played Stuff Fables or Komenoth, this is going to look very similar in terms of how a turn is resolved because you always take turns. The enemies never take a turn until these cards come out. But instead of like in Stuff Fables, I'm drawing five dice from a bag instead of drawing five cards from a deck. In this case, oh my gosh, I got some terrible stuff right off the bat. So here I've drawn a Calamity. I'm going to resolve this first and see if something really terrible happens on this map. And again, this is unique to each map. So I go to the board and you see it says three plus. What that means is I roll the black die and I add its result to the current time. So the longer you're out, the more dangerous things get. In this case, I got a zero plus a time of one, so we did not have that result, so this just gets discarded next to the deck. Okay, next I had to take my turn with whatever cards I drew, and then this is going to go over, and again, for right now, nothing's going to happen until we get uh, four of these out, which will make those guys become hostile. So as I said, we've got four colors in the game, and I've drawn three of them. Red is mainly used for melee attack, green is mainly used for range attack, and blue is mainly used for defense. Now this is unfortunate because what I wanted to draw was yellow so that Ringer could either scavenge for items because that's a yellow action or talk to those Meeklings and try to get them to be friendly to us, which is also a yellow action. But the main actions you can take are pretty simple. First of all, you can use any card to move. And the amount of the card is how far you'll move across borders. Now, do know that there's a solid green line at this border. That means I need to use a green card or a series of green cards to move over however many green borders I want during that movement. There are also blue borders and red borders. You'll see them sometimes. But any color can be used to move across the uh, dashed white lines here. Now, if I was on a scavenge space, I could use a yellow card to start a scavenge action. If I wanted to shoot these guys, I could try to right now because my Needler actually has three range, which means one, two, three. I can shoot these guys from where I am with this green card, potentially kill them, but I don't want to do that. I can also trade cards to a character who has uh, fewer than two cards. So I can just give like both of these to Grumple, who likes them, and that'll slow down how quickly I go through the deck because Grumple will draw fewer cards next turn. You always draw up to five, so if you already have cards, you draw fewer. So I'm going to give those to Grumple. And I'll use the one green to move myself a little closer to my potential friends. And then this first threat card gets slotted underneath the Meekling. And generally speaking, if he activates later and starts attacking us, he's going to do that particular action. So he'll do a squeak shot. So the cards both show who's going to activate and also what they'll do and kind of let you prepare. That was one turn. Pretty simple. Grumple's going to get three cards. All right, a whole lot of red and blue, but still no yellow. And there's also a wild, but I haven't drawn any of that, which is unfortunate. 
So a good thing they've done in this game is they have made it to that uh, if you spend three of any combination of colors, you can get over a solid line, even if you don't have that particular color. So Grumble doesn't have a green, but he can still get over that if he wants to. So let's go ahead and do a two red and a one blue to move over there. And I guess Grumble will go toward that uh, scaven space. So let's spend a two to get there. And I'll hang on to these for now because, again, I'm not trying to rush through the deck. I just want to get some yellows or the white wild cards. All right, Ringer is up with five new cards. Uh oh, another threat. But good, we got what we were waiting for. So this is the wild suit. It also counts as a color, which will be significant in a moment when I show you how uh, these actions work. And then I've also got a one here that is yellow, which is the one for scavenging and for communicating with people. So let's show you how an actual action works. I'm gonna use this two blue to move one, two across the dash lines into a space with these guys. Now this might be a terrible idea. My success uh, chances aren't fabulous, but I wanna show you how it works anyway. So here's the key thing with skill tests. You pick a first card to kind of define how the skill test is gonna work. So this is I'm gonna do a one yellow, and it has to have the symbol of the action you're trying to do. So I could have also used the wild, which is any symbol. Now I can play any number of other cards I want, but they each need to match either the color or the value of the original played card. So in this case, I can play the one, even though it's a white card, because remember, I'm not caring about the symbol anymore, I care about the color. If this is a white card, that's a yellow card, but I can play it because it's also a one. I can play this because it's also a one. So I'm getting plus three to my test. And then additionally, Ringer has a plus two to yellow test automatically. So that gives me five total. And don't forget, the Meeklings also have a five, so this makes me tied with them, which again is not ideal, but I'm going to show you what happens when you try. Or, uh, gosh, you know, maybe I'm not. This seems like a bad idea to just jump in like this and maybe fail and lose my friends, because once you mess up one of these, they become hostile and they start attacking you. So let's rewind a little bit and show you an easier test. Let's use my one green to move uh, just one space over there. And then let's use my wild to try to pick up one of these scavenging. So that's a two difficulty with my one and uh, my plus two to yellow. I have a three against it. Now to finish off a test, you do roll dice. With tests where there's no other figure involved, like this one, they're unopposed. So you just roll the one die, which tends to give positives, but can give a negative. But if you're doing an opposed test, like fighting somebody or trying to convince somebody, you roll both dice. And the black die tends to make the test harder because this is added to the difficulty of the test. So here I played one with my skill of two. I have three against a two difficulty. I got a zero, so I get to reveal this. And good, just what I need. I got two food. So I add that to my colony. I dial up the food dial to two, and that's a little bit closer to feeding my people. All right, then for now, I'll hang on to both of those. And this goes over to the threat track underneath the other Meeklings. So we're halfway to them getting hostile. All right, Grumple has two cards left, but I will note that I can get rid of as many as I want. So I think I'll discard this one. I want to keep the three attack maybe for the next map. So that means I'll get four new cards. No black, please. Yes. Oh, and I got a lot of yellow. Darn. So I left myself in a bad spot because Ringer can't take any extra cards because uh, he already has two. So I can't trade like the two yellow to him. What I can do is use both of these to try to uh, get that scavenging token. Or actually, I don't have to use uh, both of the yellows. Let's save those yellows, and I'll do um, a two yellow to start, because remember, I need to have the icon that matches the chest I'm doing. And then matching the value, I've got four plus one, five, easily uh, equaling the two difficulty, and I get two more food. Now we're kind of wrapping things up, so let's just move over with the blue for now and stop there. All right, Ringer's definitely going to get rid of this blue and draw four new cards, trying to get some yellows to help him uh, convince these guys to join us. Oh, uh, we got our third threat card. So one more, and at the end of the turn, because that's when you resolve threat, these guys will become hostile if we haven't made them our friends yet. But, ooh, we got a three wild. This should make our first test pretty easy. Or, man, maybe it won't, because I actually can't get over there. See, it was a terrible idea to use the one green to move here. I should have saved it to get across that line. Because if I was in that space, I could use the three wild to start out the test and then use any other three to boost it. That would have given me a six against these guys. Because even though they both have the same icon, I can't play the one or the three and then use the other one because uh, they have different values and aren't the same color. All right, so I guess I have to move over to here, and then I'm back where I was, but I can't wait any longer. So I'm going to go and use the three wild all by itself with my bonus of plus two. There's an opposed check. They have five difficulties, so I need to beat the black die or equal it. 
Ah, and I failed. Okay, so you're gonna get to see some combat, I guess, because uh, the difficulty went up to six and I only had a five. So the situation is now hostile, and that's bad because uh, these guys already have two threat cards. Enemies activate whenever all the enemies have a threat card under them, so they're about to attack me. So let's see, do I wanna run back to Grumple, who has better defense? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I can fight these guys too well. So I'm going to run back one space with the red. I'm going to save the yellow for defense. You'll see how that works in a moment. All right, so now I'm going to resolve the enemy's attack. So uh, he's doing a squeak shot. So he's going to move zero toward the closest person. He's going to shoot the closest person. I decide if there's a tie within three range for four damage. So again, I get to decide, and I'm going to say Ringer for this first one. And you can use any card for defense, and you get your regular stat bonuses. So I'm going to do a 1, a plus 2, that's 3 defense against a difficulty of 4. And it's just like any other check, it is opposed because the guy's trying to shoot me. So I've got a 3, he's got a 4. Ooh, and actually this time I did okay, because the difficulty went down by 1 to 3. And if I equal or exceed, so I dodged his shot. Then the melee meekling is going to do an assault scurry. So he's going to move up the two, attack for five, then after attacking, try to move two spaces toward the nearest scavenge token. So he's going to charge in here. We'll have him attack Grumple this time. And Grumple could use his three red with his two bonus to have a five defense, but I'd rather use that to attack the guy. So let's just uh, let him get hit automatically. No matter how much damage is dealt, you only take one damage. And your characters have this much damage capacity, so four. So he's got one of his four life, but don't forget he can uh, heal himself if he gets enough white cards. All of these special powers are powered by having this much value of white cards to discard. And then this guy runs over here to the closest uh, token because they ignore the special movement sides. And then after an AI turn is resolved, all of the threat cards go away, even though we had three in this case. So that was certainly not too friendly. I think Grumble will keep these cards. And oh, you know, I just remember this might have made a difference. Grumble's uh, Tattered Scarf lets him draw a hand of six cards instead of five. So I need red or white to do a melee attack, so I guess both of those would help with that. Although anybody can do a range or melee attack even without an item, they just don't get any special bonuses to it. So let's use this first green to move into the space with the melee guy. He's got a defense of six, so if my test equals or exceeds that, he takes one damage, which in this case would defeat him. So I'll go ahead and use my three melee. You already saw Grumple has plus two, so that's five. Then he gets plus one from his steak knife, that's six. This guy's not a leader or boss, so that's it. And I have no other threes or reds to boost. So we are tied, not great odds for me. Ooh, and yeah, definitely not there. So the difficulty went up to eight, and I fail my attack. Okay, so I'll try again, starting with the white, paying another uh, two value cards. It gives me plus four, so I'm seven this time. And yes, difficulty goes down to six, and he is defeated, sadly. I want him to join me. And then I have these two kind of random cards left. I'm going to try to scavenge, because that's uh, one scavenge plus another one bonus. So I need a zero. Minus one. I fail. Not rolling great so far. All right, coming over to Ringer with five cards. Okay, we do get a threat, and now that only one Meekling is left, they will activate, because again, whenever all the current enemies have a card under them, that's when they attack. All right, but this Meekling only has five defense. Let's see if we can take him out. So in this case, I want to do a range attack. That's what Ringer is good at, so I need to start it with the white one. And I figured he's got plus one, plus two more from his Needler, so that's uh, already four against the defense of five. Let's throw in both of our other one cards to go up to six, so beating his defense by one. And oh my gosh! Okay, well, we fail. There you go, that happens sometimes. Now I know this person is about to charge into someone's space, so I'm going to give this uh, blue to Grumple. Since we're equally distant, I can have him attack Grumple, and this will keep him pretty much safe. So speaking of, the Meekling charges in and attacks for five. This is the same assault scare as the other one did. Grumple's got a one, four, six defense against that five attack. And I will note you don't get defense at all if you don't play a card, as you saw earlier. Oh my gosh! Wow, so yeah, he goes up to a 7, and my 6 uh, does not defeat him, so I take a second wound on Grumple. This is a terrible first encounter. Once again, the threat card's discarded. We go back to Ringer. Oh, I'm sorry, no, no, this is actually Grumple's turn. So six cards. We are getting two threats, so uh, definitely the guy's attacking again if he gets a chance. By the way, in this case, with two of them, I would randomize, and he's going to attack with his gun again. That's only if Grumble gives him a chance. Let's go ahead and do a two melee plus two more. So that's seven with all the skills versus the defense of five. And yes, definitely defeated him. 
So a sad start to this little mission is friends become enemies. Now, as you remember, the loot here was a broken item card. So I draw the topmost item. It's a laser pointer accessory. So it would cost one scrap to repair it. And if I put a battery on it, which uh, you use once and it stays active for the entire mission, I would get a plus one bonus to range of attacking with a ranged weapon with a range value of two or more. So definitely a decent one to consider bringing later. But for right now, it's broken and I can't use it until I fix it. By the way, the two threat cards stay here because something bad might happen if we get four of them without leaving. So you still have a timer even when the enemies are gone. And so speaking of that, do I want to scavenge or just go? I think I'm going to scavenge with the three. Okay, so got it even with the minus one. And two more scrap, but don't forget for the side mission I'm on, that becomes food as well. So I'm at six food. And I'll keep the one white card because if I get two more white value, I can discard all that to heal old Grumple wants with uh, his or her pain management power. Okay, Ringer's drawn five cards. I've gone through the decks. So I'm going to shuffle. In this case, good for me. No really negative cards. So let's see. I'm going to give the green to Grumple to get her um, across that green hex side. I'll keep the two white for now. I can give that to Grumple later to help her heal because you keep your cards when you leave a map. Uh, let's see, I guess I'll use the blue to move. And then I can immediately exit once I move into an exit space. So I won't take any more turns, but I'll keep these cards and Grumple will get to take some turns until she's off. Okay, so Grumple's drawn four cards to go, which he already has. I kind of wish I had drawn one threat card because they all get discarded, so I would have taken one out of the deck for this uh, next uh, encounter. So yeah, I got a lot of stuff. All right, so I'll move one green over to here to exit. And I'll keep hold of all the rest for now. Uh, any remaining scavenge tokens are discarded and they won't be reseeded, so I'm still going to be slowly getting toward the three and the four value ones. But yeah, that was one map. <laughs> it definitely took longer than it should have with those guys turning against me, unfortunately. So I come back and now I'm going to travel to Enjo, which is space 43. So you'll see that Enjo has this whole fun kind of narrative section when you first go there, but we've been here before, so we're just going to do one time and set it up. This one, you know, has a lot more solid lines. Solid white lines you can't walk over at all, but again, green and red, you can cross with the right color. We're both going to start right here. We want to climb up to that uh, little mountainous thing. Now, there is another quest here I've already done, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're just trying to get out of here. I'll see it all the value two ones, and that's all of them. So the next place I go, we'll have threes. Let's go for a friendlier encounter this time. It's safe for now. Okay, so if a surge happens, which means I draw four of those threat cards, then I'll add a time, which is not good, and I'll draw another encounter, and they might attack immediately. So I want to get out of here pretty quickly. So in this case, Grumple is going to take the first turn because you switch uh, which hero is first each time you uh, go to a new page. So she's already got five cards, and since we're just moving, I don't see any need to replace any of them. Although, you know, actually, we need a ton of green to get out of this map, so maybe I'll get rid of the... The two blues for now. Okay, so drawn three. Nice, I got a green and no black cards yet, so. And so let's see, I guess I'll send Grumple up here and kind of around. She can try to scavenge on her way and then just take one more green to get over there. So first green, we'll get her across that line. While she's here, she'll do a scavenge with, again, the yellow to start it, but another two to boost it. That's four against a good difficulty two, minus one, still fine. We get two more food with our side mission converting the scrap. That brings us up to eight out of the 14 we need. For those keeping count, we got to feed those babies. I could do another scavenge. Although with this one, and if Ringer gives me the other two, I will be able to heal myself. So let's not for now. Instead, I'll just use this three and move up here. Again, I'm ignoring the eyeballs because I've already been to this place before. And I can't cross the green yet, so I'll have to wait till next turn. But I'll keep uh, these for now. A ringer. Should I discard any? No, let's see if I get a green. Oh, I got a threat card. One out of four. So for now, let's use all three of these to move over. But I'm still maybe unwisely going to hang on to the two to get to Grumple, hopefully. Speaking of Grumple, she'll get rid of this red before drawing. Oh, second threat card. We're halfway to danger. Ooh, I'm going to give the two uh, green to ringer since uh, he's farther back. And I'll play both of these to move here. I'll play a two to try to get one of these... Uh, Scavenge tokens, got it. Two more scrap to food. And then I will leave with my one intact. Okay, now we just gotta hope Ringer can get out of here, yes. Okay, so ooh, I got a lot of wilds now. I'm definitely gonna give the uh, two to Grumple to heal later. And then I guess I'll play the three green to get right to the exit. Oh wait, actually before I do that, let's uh, use this to scavenge. Remember, uh, Ringer's got a plus two, so that's a success. 
And then after we move, we'll use this to scavenge there with another plus two, easily succeeding. And that's uh, a battery plus two more food. I guess we're going to hold on to the two green and she'll head off, or he'll head off, I mean. Just to show you the battery, by the way, it goes right on ringer. And again, I could either bring that back to the colony for later use, or if I get an item that can use it, I can put it on the item to boost it. And don't forget, we take all the uh, threat cards we had accumulated and discard them, so we're going to kind of protect ourselves for a little while. So we are now reaching our destination, central place, where that doghouse is located. It says page 41. Our time is advancing to three, and hey, look, we got 12 food out of 14, so almost there. Should be fine. Okay, and here we are on a mean street. We're going to advance to... Uh, oh, I already did that. We're on three time. And we're into threes for our scavenging now, so they're going to be a little bit harder to get, but I have a better bonus. We'll show up over here, uh, hiding behind this uh, mailbox. Now we need to get to the exit. First, we're going to draw an encounter card. I thought it's safe for now, but there's a different one. Okay, but actually it has the uh, same effect. Okay, so we're safe for a little while. We're back to Ringer taking the first turn. He had a two green left, so let's keep that. And Uh-oh. We got a Catastrophe, potentially, and then also a first threat card. All right, so this time we're looking for a four plus, and we already have three time. And yeah, there we go. So A2 and D1 are both the same street map. They do repeat a couple of them, but there's different effects. So here it says, a sniper fires at you from the second story window of a nearby house. This character receives one automatic wound. Well, glad it was Ringer and not Grumple. So now Ringer has one wound as well. So with that fun out of the way, let's see. I could run over to there and try to get that with the one. Yeah, let's do that for now. So that's uh, the two green to move. And then I'll use both cards, the yellow to start and the one to boost it, to search there. So it gives me a four with my character's bonus. Got it. And three more food. Excellent. Now that does fulfill our goal, but since I was pretty close to starvation uh, last time, I'd like to get a surplus of food and really uh, make it easy for myself. And as for Grumble, drawing four cards. Plus the two. Okay, there's another threat card. And no greens to move easily. Let's go here with a red, and then three to get over the green border. And again, I've already seen that two eye. So I could move one more and just leave, but yeah, I do want to go ahead and heal myself one using my pain management ability, which again requires three wild card value to be discarded. I've got one plus two is three. So Grumple is down to one wound now. Let's so ring around no cards saved. Oh man, one more threat. So we are now only one away from advancing it. Oh man, I was going to say Feral Stare can discard a threat card, but only when it's hostile when we're fighting somebody, so I can't just stop the thing right now. All right, but I guess I'm going to go two up to here, and uh, I'll use a three with my plus two bonus to get one of these scavenge tokens. So even with the minus two, I'm still fine. Oh, this is a clue. So you can only get one of these per mission to kind of slow down how quickly you discover things, but I'm going to find out something new and important about this whole campaign uh, next time I go back to base. And I'll use one to move and uh, head out and hold on to the other one for now. So we still have to get Grumple out of here. Now, very luckily, we did not draw another threat card, but we did get the Catastrophe, but once it's happened once on a given map, then you don't do it anymore. So a ton of reds. We'll definitely hang on to those to attack. Uh, I don't really have time to do this. Actually, I'll give both of those to Ringer, because Ringer likes yellow. So we'll use the one red to move and leave and save these two for the next map. Now, normally we would just leave, but because this is the location for our current mission, then we do something different. So it says if Smokey's in play, there's a dog guarding the house. Remember, the dog would run away. If we have the pack keeper, we don't. Uh, we have the dog biscuit. So it says discard the dog biscuit. So we fed the guy and we get the pack keeper alliance card from the discovery deck. We got this whole deck of fun secret stuff, kind of a legacy-ish element. Let it be known on this day, the 43rd day of the second summer, that through generosity and compassion, the good furs of Abigail Lane are hereby called dog friends and shall forever have the loyalty and respect of all dogs except the accursed Shih Tzus. <laughs> uh, so there we go. That's awesome. So this goes in our little colony deck, and uh, I guess it would let us get into this house for free in the future. All right, and now it says we're going to page 17 for the next step of this adventure. All right, so we're on a straight wall. This is one I've never been on before. It does say plus one time. And now we're actually going to read the description here because, again, this is my first time here, which also means all of the eyeballs are going to be in play. So we'll start here, but let's see what it says. 
No markings, observes Messiah. So one quick thing I'll note is the narrative is all written as though you have all four characters with you. So if you're up to controlling all four solo like I am, or if you're playing with four people or two players each controlling two, then you'll get kind of a little bit of a better narrative experience. Have you ever been here before? You all look around nervously. It's always the unknown that gives you the most pause. Haha, <laughs> pause. You gather in the tall weeds at the side of the house, the cool shadow of the structure making it easy to hide. You need to find a way in. Up ahead, you see a rusty faucet poking out of the wall. It seems a likely place to start. There are often gaps in corrosion around faucets, making it easier to chew through rotten siding and squeeze into the wall space. Okay, so we're going to get our regular setup. Plus, oh, we're going to have an environment card, which will change the rules a little bit. And then if we were being hunted by enemies, any large enemies would go away. They couldn't fit in here. And it does say low visibility. Environment card only applies via text targets occupying a wall space. And then we're on mission 13, so we're going to go to 17.5. Sitting next to the rusty faucet is a bored mouseling, yawning and shifting her weight from paw to paw in an effort to stay alert. You consider how best to approach the stranger, but before you can, you're startled by a hidden group of geckos who leap out and pounce upon the poor guard. They knock her out and leave her body lying there and slip quietly through a gap between the faucet and the wall. Those villains, gasps Grumple. Okay, place a meekling figure on its side on the one eyeball space and place another meekling figure standing on the animal B space. Do not add their cards to the threat track. And right now the situation is safe, but clearly we're going to be fighting some dastardly geckos trying to mess with the mice we were going to form an alliance with. So we got one meekling injured there. Another meekling still, I guess, standing guard here. We have the environment card I mentioned, which just shows that uh, if I'm attacking with range, I have zero range unless I use a yellow card to boost it. And Grumble's back to being first again. So we got one threat card. So theoretically something bad will happen once we get four. A lot of yellow right now. So with all that yellow, let's just move one to here. And I'm going to play a yellow with a red to get four, one more than the difficulty. And got it. A broken item. In this case, we found bird skull cat plus one defense. Oh, and dust feather will not attack. That's a bird who can kind of hover above and attack you. So that's pretty cool. But again, it's broken, so we can't use it right now. And now let's go ahead and discard the two red and see what's up with this guy. So we have to stop when we get to a new eyeball spot and kind of investigate. So I can't move through yet. And I couldn't anyway, because that's a green line. There's indeed a significant gap between the faucet and the siding, as well as evidence of past chewing. You're not the first. Grumple shakes her shaggy head at the tight squeeze. You must really hate me, she sighs. Pish posh, whisper assures her. It's merely a mild dislike. Don't worry, Grumpy, I hate you, grins Ringer. Okay, we're on mission 13, so 17.2. Well, we can render aid to the battered meekling by doing a blue group task, difficulty 8. So how group tasks work is it's basically like a regular task that goes over time, but there's no rolling. So if I had a blue card or a wild right now, I could play it, and then me and other characters could add cards to it that, again, either match it in value or color until we get up to eight. And only characters on this space can contribute. So right now I can't help, and I'll just hold onto this card for next turn. And so let's see, Ringer has a bunch of not-so-great stuff, but I also don't want the thing to advance, so we'll keep it for now and just draw two more. All right, so I guess we'll move three to get to where the injured mouse is. I'll use the wild to start it, so now I can only play white cards or ones, but I've got three ones, so that's already four out of the eight we need. The initial guard goes up here to show you what you selected, and then you keep track of your total right there. All right, Grumble's going to keep the three yellow. Let's hope we get some whites or ones. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's a two white that will uh, bring us to six. And a one yellow, that'll bring us a seven. So one shy. Ringer can easily finish it next turn. But I think Grumble can go ahead and move in. So I have a two green, which will get me over the border. Unfortunately, I have to stop for this three eyeball. Let's see what it says. Okay, so this is for on mission 13. We are. We read this. The wee eyes adjust quickly in the darkness. You are standing on a rusty pipe inside the wall of the house. Up ahead, a light streams in from a mouse hole. Moving shapes pass across the light. It is the gecko sneaking in. So we got two geckos. And they're spread among the wall interior spaces. And oh, they'll give us an item and some uh, scrap if we defeat them. So the situation is now hostile. We're going to be fighting. In this case, I randomly drew a gecko hunter, a ranged guy, and gecko leader who has knives. And yeah, no talking to them. They've got pretty high defense, but still only one life. 
going to randomly shuffle them. So the leader is going to be having this one threat card we already had, and the hunter is not activating yet. So we're going to wait until they both have a card before they attack. And here are our friends, the geckos. And so let's spread them out along the wall interior spaces. So what the hey? Let's go ahead and say the, uh, <laughs> the weaker gecko is right on my space, and I surprised him. So I can do range attacks, don't forget, I just won't get a bonus, but hey, let's go ahead and try it. So I'm going to start with a green, and because of low visibility, I can only attack at range zero. I'm going to boost it with a yellow, which actually would let me attack at higher range, but that's okay. So I've got a six attack with no bonus, sadly, because my character doesn't have any bonus for this. All right, and the defense is six. I guess I probably should have just given the cards a ringer and made it more effective, but ah, we fail. <laughs> that was a bad call. Grumble will keep the blue in case we get attacked. Here comes Ringer. Gonna heal this guy, hopefully. Oh, so they will be attacking after Ringer's turn. Good to know. Oh, perfect. Okay, we got the one, so let's finish the group task first. Which does mean that placeholder card is also discarded. Oh, my poor Noggin, gasps the gro groggy sentry. She regains her senses. Dandy, she shouts suddenly. She's in trouble. Each character that contributed puts their influence card into play. Put the heavy objects environment card into play. You may carry the injured meekling to her fellow guard using the heavy objects rule. Okay, so two things happen now. We get to add these cards to our current hand, one for each of our characters. You'll see they're very powerful, and they also stay in the deck, so they kind of dilute the bad cards a bit. So that leaves a uh, ringer with these cards. And then separately, we got the heavy objects card to carry. Basically, it's a four difficulty group action where you can play cards over time. But all the card, but the card that initiates it has to be the correct color for going over borders. So to get this guy into the house, I need to use a uh, green card to start. So Ringer could normally do a range attack against this guy using the white to start it. But don't forget, with loads of visibility, we need a yellow card involved to attack someone inside of the pipes. And we don't have one that could boost the two. The three is too high. Hey, what we can do is give a feral stare and freak that gecko out with our two white card. That'll discard the threat card under the hunter, which will give us one turn for uh, Grumble to hopefully go crazy on him. And I guess for the rest of my turn, I'm going to keep my cards. I need to get a green to uh, carry that injured guy over. All right, so no activation. So no activation because of Ringer uh, using her feral stare. Or his feral stare, I should say. Oh, and they still aren't activating. Awesome. Oh, and we even got a green. So let's try to smash this guy. We've got a three attack, and again, plus a three for my ability. So that's still only a six versus six, so not an awesome chance. So let's see if it goes better this time. And yes, it does. Our plus three beats their plus two, and that is one of the geckos defeated. And it does mean the leader's going to be able to attack, so I want to keep some of these uh, blues. Let's for now start uh, carrying this mouse. So I'll use one white to go back over. Let's go help this mouse. So I'll use one green to go back over and outside. I use another one to start the group task. And again, because that's a green, I can actually bring this guy over. And I'll uh, contribute, I guess, two of them. I'll only leave one left for Ringer. And uh, the thing is, if we both contribute, we both get a free move as well as the carrying. So that'll be a nice little bonus. And I'll keep the two blue to defend Grumble. Speaking of defense, okay, twin knives. Okay, after taking a turn with this gecko, take one additional turn with it using the same threat card. What? These crazy leaders. Okay, so he's going to move up to three, and he's going to attack uh, five damage, but I can split who the target is for the two different attacks. So let's do Grumple first. We'll use the two blue, which brings it up to five, equal to the damage with uh, his armor or her armor. Yes, so dodge that. And Ring, we're going to use a five blue. Does not have a bonus, but I want to save the yellow card. And yes, also dodge because the difficulty went down by one. The threat card is discarded. Ringer's going to get four more cards. Okay, so the leader will activate again unless we can defeat him. So first things first, let's use the green to finish off the carrying, and then we'll move all three of us over to here. And this is going to be defending again. I guess we have grumpled that, and I'll hang on to these for Ringer. Here comes Gecko Leader twin knifing it again. So this time I'll have Ringer defend with the three, I guess. That makes it an even match. Ah, but I lose and do take another damage. And then Grumple. That'd give me three defense. They're probably gonna get hurt anyway. I'll just take the wound automatically and save the red to hit this guy in a second. And Grumple draws some decent stuff, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to hit the guy. Nah, he's got another activation. Uh, so first of all, a two could be used by Grumple to throw our mouse friend, <laughs> as rough as that is. And it would move him just two spaces automatically, which would be pretty good, absolutely. 
Let's see, I could attack the leader with this. That would give me four plus uh, three more for my items. Oh, plus one more because it's a leader. So I'd actually have eight. I'd be beating their defense by one. So let's try that. Come on, I'm up by one. Yes. All right. So that defeats the other gecko and we are safe again. Don't forget they uh, looted uh, scrap for us. Two scrap. We actually get the scrap this time because it's not from a uh, scavenge token. And we also get a broken item. Bottle cap vest. All right. So, oh. Upon first discovering, it would be plus one key, but we can only get one key per mission, so we're not getting another clue yet. And then I guess I'll start moving this thing. I know Ringer's already got a two yellow, so let's start with a yellow. That'll be two, and then Ringer can play a two, and we'll both move up and save some actions. Speaking of Ringer... Uh-oh. Oh, so actually, in this case, uh, this one will only make the hunt show up, but we aren't being followed by anybody. We defeated all the enemies on our way, so we can just go straight in. So let's see, I could keep the two yellow. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to discard the two blue to finish off the group action. We all carry our friend. And then scavenging still matters to me. I'll use the two yellow to try to get one of these with my bonus. Yep. And we get three more food. Awesome. And then I'll, uh, yeah, I guess I'll play the one green to start another carry. And hopefully Grumple will draw something that will work with that. Speaking of Grumple, six new cards. Wow, did she ever draw something that works with that? That's awesome. So let's explore first. I'll do uh, two yellow with a boost. Try to get the scavenge token. Got it. Three more scrap. That becomes food. We're up to 21 food. The max is 25, so definitely feeling really good now. And then I'll go ahead and use, I guess, the three green to finish the carry. There we go. Now we've got some random thing here. Let's uh, use the blue to go investigate what that is. All right, let's kind of summarize. It has two electrical wires, and it says to place two tokens on. So we're actually into four territory now. Jeez. Let me think to investigate those. Uh, I think I'm just going to come back. And then I'll start another group carry with a two and see if Ringer can join me in a second. And let's see. Ah, uh, second threat card. Oh, bad luck. Ringer has nothing to join the carry right now. So let's instead spend the one to move here and the yellow boosted by the red to give me an even chance of getting this four. And I did. And wow, four scraps. So that means I'm up to 25 food, my max. So I'm not going to worry too much about scavenging after this point. I guess I'll keep the three blue for some more movement in a moment. Right, grumple. Let's see what she can do. Uh oh, two more threats. We're going to see what happens with the threat track in a moment because that's four total. We can finish our carry with the two. Brings her here, and then, yes, we're going to throw the mouse, gently, of course, <laughs> over there. And then I'll keep the three red and move over here and exit with the three yellow. And uh, then uh, I guess we're going to have Ringer move after the threat activates. And all it says is discard all the threat cards and increase time by one, but I am now at five, which means uh, any more time is going to put my colony in danger, potentially. And I get, ooh, a lot of wilds and a threat card that will be discarded right when I move, so that's awesome. So let's go and use the three blue and keep those wilds to get over here and exit. Threat card is going to be discarded. I guess I'll hang on to the... Well, I'll give Grumple a two for now, and then uh, she can get a one later to heal. And so it says... Okay, we got to remember that we carried the injured Meekling to her fellow guard and go to page 19. All right, so we do go up in time. Look at this interesting place, the Stranger Colony. Broken yellow light falls past horizontal slat shutters, casting golden ribbons across the room. Everything else is cast in shadow. You sniff the air and share nervous glances. The odor of other rodents is prominent. The living room is a giant cavern. The ceiling is impossibly high above you, and the moldy far corners hold shadows capable of hiding unknown dangers. All right, so we came from the wall, so it says we go here. We could have apparently come in from the kitchen. I'm not sure how. We only have two more of these tokens, so that's all that's left. Okay, it says if we carried the guard in, we go to 19-4, so hopefully that'll be a nice one. You arrive carrying the wounded meekling. Armed rodents soon appear, mostly mice, and each brandishing a weapon. Soon you are surrounded. Their weapons are needles and kitchen utensils, but Dandy barks at them to stand down. These good furs saved Luna and me from a gecko ambush, she informs them. We reduced the difficulty of the group task at I-1 by 7. Nice, go to 19-5. Suddenly a projectile whistles past and ricochets off a book tent with a loud thwap. The shot draws the attention of the mice that you have surrounded. A band of scaled ones have broken into the room. Their weapons aimed in your direction. Okay, so we can get all the geckos. 
Quick, help these mice defend their home, shot Messiah. Okay, so on the two space, place a number of meekling figures equal to the number of characters. These are people we're protecting. So they're a friendly nomad. That's another environment card. And then we're encountering a scorpion leader, a scorpion, and a number of scaled ones equal to the number of characters minus one. Okay, so scorpions and lizards. We get four scrap for loot. Awesome. Okay, so we got the scorpion leader. Two life notes. We need to hit him twice, but only five defense. And we got, oh, we have the hunter, so he can shoot us from far away, but he has only six defense. Here's our fun scorpion. Yuck. So interestingly, the scorpion spawns on our space. The uh, sniper is right here, so not too far away. Our potential friends we'd like to protect right there. I'll note that if we are on their space, they can uh, give us plus two to our attacks, which is pretty cool. And they do have some automatic defense if they get attacked. We're back to Ringer going first. Two wilds. Okay, we got one threat card. Oh, we got back uh, Grumple's huge melee card, but I can't give it to her right now. So with all these wilds, I'm going to use aim. So when I do a range attack, I can reduce the difficulty by three. So the uh, gecko would have uh, three armor instead of six. So let's do that. And then I need to actually start the range attack. So that's one, two, plus uh, two for my gun. So that's four versus a three defense. Let's make it five versus three. Use up all our wilds. Let's try to take out this guy right away, even though that means the scorpion will activate. And yes, okay, so he is defeated. Like I said, that means the scorpion's coming after me now. I'm going to hold on to this card. So it's a six attack, and it's a toxic wound, so it means a little bit uh, harder to heal. So Nathers is about to die, and I feel like this might be the last fight, so I'll just let Ringer tank it, I guess. And then uh, that'll leave Grumple ready to smash this guy. Now, speaking of Grumple, let's get some cards. Good, no activations, <laughs> tons of red. Yeah, this guy's going to get destroyed. So don't forget, he's got a uh, five defense but two life. So I want to go all in on one single attack. And he's a leader, so I'm getting plus two for my stake knife, plus two for my skill. So I've got a four naturally. So that'll be six. And now oh, what the hell? Let's make it eight. Oh, good thing we did, because uh, boosted their defense to seven. So that's one wound. And then let's just smash with a three. That brings us to seven against five defense. And yes, we got it. So we have defeated these guys, and that brings our scrap up to 10 total. I did say to read a new entry when we defeated them. A slender gray mouse pushes through the throng with her thin limbs and squints closely into Ringer's face. Er, hi, he says. A hamster, she exclaims. Aren't you a cutie? Then she turns to Grumple and says, oh my, I haven't seen one of your type in many cycles. Grumple looks stunned. Yes, I see your sadness, my friend. I am sorry for it. She turns to the rest of you and says, We appreciate your help. You're welcome to nest here. My name is Irma. A pleasure to meet you all. So we can meet her at the one. I didn't forget that's the one that we get a minus seven to the difficulty because we helped the other mouse. So let's go see what the deal is. I'm going to guess that... Oh, but there's a green traveling thing there. Yes, for now, I'll go ahead and use the yellow to move over here and see what's up. If the situation is safe, you can talk to Irma about forming an alliance by resolving a yellow group task difficulty 14. Only characters on the space can contribute. All right. Um, yeah, so let's see if we can get her. The question is, do I start the group task with the two white, but limit the cards that I can play to it, because then yellow cards won't work by themselves? Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess I do. And then I could go over to that scrap. I kind of want to go see what these other... Uh, Cards are about, but let me just hang out for right now. Ringer still has the big red left over. Nice. Uh, yeah, four they can go on the group task. That's great. So let's move to that first. Put the four in, so now we only need one more. And I do want to see what's up with these things. So I'm going to use the three red to travel across the rat red line to here and see what's over there. And I'll summarize because we're getting a little bit long with this video, but basically uh, it says that there is gerbil food up above and they're not sure where it came from. Okay, then with the other red, let's see what these people had to say on the second one. Ooh, we get to draw four items. We can trade an unbroken item for one of them. So let's see, staple smasher. It's a pretty good uh, melee weapon. Rodent traps would help our colony be safer. More spare ammo. Junk barriers, discard to prevent a bad event to our colony as well. So both of these are kind of like colony protectors. Unfortunately, though, it's a uh, unbroken item. We don't have any of those I want to get rid of, so I'm going to skip on all of those. All right, Grumple, we get one threat card. 
Okay, so I do have twos that could finish off the group task. I don't have any yellows to search with, and I've seen all the eyeballs. We'll just leave those fours for now and resolve it. We can't leave as we are trapped by the dog that patrols the yard outside, says Irma. Our food supplies are very low. If only something could be done about that dog. As a matter of fact, we've solved that problem, you say, recounting your tale. Come with us and join your car colony. We have both safety and space. Okay, retrieve the central place alliance card from the discovery deck and add it to the colony supply deck box. Then go to the success entry on your main mission card. We did it. And so they let them know the good first of central place and Abigail land, being of like mind, have entered to a promise to share food, shelter, and other necessities. Okay, there they are, our new friends. That's two alliances in one mission. I didn't have any before this, and that's great. So the mission will tell you where to go for success here. It's 9916, and we'll get our side mission in a moment. We'll get to uh, just get plus one morale because uh, we, it wasn't our main mission. So it brings up the 16 morale. Very nice. The colony buzzes with activity as furry citizens clean and spruce up the place. Today you are hosting visitors, emissaries from Central Place, to coming to Abigail Land to talk to the elders and wise ones. This is an exciting time for us, Patch Marvels. For many seasons we have known of other groups like us, forming in the various local dwellings. Some that we met had chosen a dark life, but this is the first time we have hosted welcome leaders in our home. He gathers you around and slaps a paw on Grumple's shaggy shoulder, another on his eyes. He beams at you all. This, this is the fruit of your labors. Plus five population. I was barely feeding what I had, and now I got plus five. Oh, God, we're going to be hunting for food forever. And then a plus three morale. Wow, so I am happy as a clam. Okay, and most mission cards get banished, so I could not go and get these people again. But again, you keep on finding new ones. And then I go to page 101. So this is the colony phase. And first, you resolve the side mission. That's one morale. We already talked about that. Then we'd read the new clue entry. I'm not going to do that because that's sort of a continuing spoiler as it builds. So you can see that when you play the game yourself. But we do do one event because we went over our time by one. So we draw the top event card. In this case, it's a crawling threat roaches attack. And uh, you have this like chart that kind of goes through what each of the events does. But in this case, uh, we have coffee cans that protect our food from them so they don't steal the food. We cancel the event. So as you build up your colony, you can prevent bad things from happening. Now that we would have to feed our population, we have 19. So down to six food. I'm poor again. And we can build something with our scrap. Let's see if we can get a market because we do have uh, 10 scraps. So yeah, because we have at least 15 population, which by the way, I needed a card to get that much population. We're going to get more population every turn. I don't know how I feel about that, but I can exchange things so I can get more food if I need to. So yeah, we're going to build that and permanently upgrade our colony. And that's it. Ringer and Grumple successful in making some friends for us. Uh, that is that is Aftermath from Plaid Hat Games. Check out the review if you haven't already. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.